How you doing guys? Big Met Dance School here again today, back once again with another Conquest video for you. Today I've got a showcase of the first lot of Pox Walkers which came with issue 4 of Conquest. I was trying to think of the issue there, I couldn't quite remember. Um, one of these, who is just coming to the front now with green tentacles, he is painted in the traditional method. And um, I've done a video in the Conquest playlist on my channel before of how to paint a pox walker like that. Uh, the other five, however, are painted in the contrast method. Um, I say traditional method for the first one, uh, the one with the green tentacles, but it wasn't actually your typical GW traditional method. It was using shades and washes, uh, shades and glazes rather, in order to do a quick and easy paint job. Um, However, yeah, like I said, the others are painted using the contrast method, and I'm going to talk you through that method today. Um, so, first of all, the majority of the miniatures have a lot of flesh showing, or all of the miniatures, in fact, have a lot of flesh showing. And the pinkish human-looking flesh, the Caucasian sort of flesh, um, I did that using Dark Oath Flesh, is the flesh colour on the model. And then the... ten. Um, antlers rather, the antlers or horns sprouting from the various parts of the miniatures. Um, I used wildwood on them to give it a nice dark sort of antler look. Um, I do, I prefer it as antler rather than um, bone, but my poxwalkers in the future issue, um, you'll see I've done them more in a bony colour, uh, just to differentiate um, further differentiate between the, the two um, repeated sets, if you like. Uh, there's leather on the miniatures. Uh, some of them have got black leather on them. That's um, black Templar that I've used to do that. Others have um, a brown leather, leather which is snake bite leather. Uh, the orange pants on and various orange bits, including pustules on some of them, uh, rusty sort of weapons on some of them. Uh, picking out detail on pants and pouches and stuff. Um, I used Griff Hound Orange for that. The eyes you'll notice are all red on these miniatures. And I used the Flesh Terror for that. And also on some of the mouths as well, just to make it look like red raw, red sort of fleshy, overly red mouths and areas of flesh. Um, one thing to note as well, when I've painted the pustules, whether it's with the Griff Hound Orange or with Plague Bearer. Um, I tried to do that when the Dark Oath Flesh was still wet in order to get a bit of uh, cross pollination, if you like, with the colours to make it look like a, a sort of a, a little bit of a blend, like a natural transition from one to the other. And I did that on the tentacle coming off this guy who's just coming to the front now, coming off his shoulder. Um, so I painted the Dark Oath Flesh and then I painted Plague Bearer Flesh onto the tentacle and allowed the two colours to mix a little bit in order to just create a more natural transition. Um, what other colours are on there? Uh, there's certain areas painted with Basilicanum grey, uh, like the grenades and the chains and uh, a few other areas. Uh, the weapons in some cases. And that is almost everything. Uh, I used a bit of Gorgon to fur on some of the miniatures, just to give you a different uh, different brown look as well. And did I use any apothecary white on any of them? I don't believe so. Um, I've just got my paints laid out here in front of me. I'm trying to pick out which colours I've used. Ah, uh, there's some Militarum green on the uh, sort of the galoshes of the guy with the axe. There, he'll come back around in a second. And you can get a good look at that. And you can see how different that green is to the Plague Bearer as well. He's just coming to the front now. There we go. Um, yeah, so that's uh, that's about it. I only used about less than 10 colours on them, I think. Uh, you'll be able to tell me if you've been listening while I've been listing them. Um, yeah, so it's a nice, quick and easy paint job. And I really it's a really effective paint job. Uh, contrast paints lend themselves really well to sort of natural curves, natural fleshy miniatures and stuff like that um, because it sort of it runs into the recesses and it doesn't matter so much if it looks a little bit blotchy because uh, it can look like a recess and where it's a, a smooth curve on a large panel of something like power armor 
um, if you get any pooling, then you get a, a big dark area just on a random part of power armor. Whereas the um, pox ridden, pox ridden pox walkers, uh, they, uh, they go really well with contrast paints because of the natural flowing nature of their skin and of any mutations on their skin, whether it's the, um, the big pustules, whether it's the tentacles or the antlers or bones that sprout from them. So I think pox walkers are almost designed to take contrast paints. And if you're not painting your pox walkers using contrast paints, then you're doing something wrong. Anyway, that's about enough waffle from me. We'll leave it there for now, guys. Check out the next video, which should be the Lieutenant Calcius miniature. Um, thanks so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you on the battlefield.